What's going on guys? Welcome to your 44th Java tutorial. What we're going to get into today's tutorial is something called abstract methods. Uh, I know we covered abstract classes in the last tutorial, but you know, one of the powers of abstract class is it allows us to create abstract methods. So how are we going to set up an abstract class? Well, it's pretty simple. I mean, pretty much the same way we set up a method. Switch that around. How are we going to set up an abstract method? Same way as we set up our class. So we're just going to say a public um, abstract um, void it's not gonna return anything let's think about something that like all com cars have but it might be a little bit different in each car such as like the, the computer setup you know the computer will tell it how much fuel to put in the engine how it turns and stuff like that um, so we can just set up a public abstract void uh, and we'll just say set up computer because all computers need to be set up it's not going to take anything within the parameters and we're just going to finish our statement there we aren't going to define the method which is kind of crazy and that's what the abstract method will do um, is you know something like this essentially do nothing but again it's just kind of for organization purposes so let's set up another one we'll have abstract void and we'll say uh, tire size or something I don't know we'll say like an int year and uh, you know string model or something so we can also add parameters to our abstract methods. Again, we aren't defining what the method is. We aren't adding brackets and adding stuff within here because then we'd get an error because abstract methods are like, hey, you know, I'm kind of lazy. I don't want to define what the method is. I'm just going to say, here's a method. And then you're like, okay, that's cool. I kind of understand that, but what again is the purpose of it? Well, once we save this class, uh, we'll go over to our Toyota class. And as you can see, we have an error. Um, so again, we're extending the car class, but since we have abstract methods within our class car, we have to implement those methods. So we're just going to go over to our Toyota, say add unimplemented methods, add unimplemented methods, sorry. So as you can see, we have some methods now that we have to include within our Toyota class because again, we extended the car class. So abstract method says, hey, okay. You can make me an abstract method, but anyone that extends me or anyone that uses me as a superclass has to include these methods. And we're like, okay, that's cool, abstract class. Um, chill out a little bit. And now we have these methods. We can set them up. So we can just do like a system uh, dot out dot print, and we'll say uh, computer set set up. All right. And you know, pretty much the same thing for our tire. So as you can see, we just have these methods. We can kind of set them up to whatever we want. But uh, again, basically when we extend the car class, it reminds us, hey, you probably want to set up these methods. Um, they're set as abstract in my class. And you guys probably want to set them up because most cars should have this kind of method. And you probably want to specify it to your specific car, which is a Toyota. And so we can just set up these methods like a system printout, car, computer setup, or system printout for the model. And then the model that gets passed in, you need a small tire. Um, obviously, these are pretty lame setups, and uh, they won't really, I mean, they aren't that great. But then we can go back to our starting point class. And since we created a new Toyota, we can use those methods, such as uh, tire size. We pass in a year, like uh, 2011, and also model, we'll say uh, Celica. And uh, there we go. That's my car, except mine's a piece of crap 1991, I think. Man, I'm surprised that thing's still running. All right, so now when we run this, we get a uh, print from our constructor of our car class. We get for the model Celica, you need a small tire. Um, so that's kind of the basic setup. Again, we have abstract class called car. Uh, you can't initiate it. You can't call a new car constructor um, within you know our starting point class. But also we, within a abstract class, we can define abstract methods such as computer setup and tire setup, which means whenever we extend the car class, we have to set up those methods or we have to include those methods within that class that is uh, that's extending the car class. Um, and again, just quickly, uh, if you guys set up an abstract method. You can't do that within just a regular class, such as like a public class car. We're going to get some errors because we would have to define the methods. But uh, if you want to set up an abstract class, you can set up some abstract methods within the class. And again, that's just kind of for organization um, and all that stuff. So uh, thanks again for watching, guys. I know it's kind of lame, and we probably won't use abstract 
whole lot, but uh, again, is a request, so I wanted to cover it for you guys. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial where we're going to learn about polymorphism. And uh, I guess I'll catch you guys then. Have a good one.